everyone. Welcome. We had a budget session, work session meeting at 2 o'clock, but you probably already, most of you know that because you were here. Um, and thank you to our Ways and Means Committee for all the hard work they do in keeping us not only fiscally sound, but um, entertained and informed. So, um, presentations. Joe Paternostro. He's going to talk to us about the bicentennial celebration coming up in 2018, which has already started. Yes, Joe? Yes. We unofficially started with the wrecking ball that you know about. Uh, I found that the best part of the wrecking ball when the kids came, they had more fun than I've ever seen painting walls. In fact, the walls look better now than they do here, at least the color in the other building. Uh, there was one girl I couldn't take a picture of, but she had paint up to her shoulder, both arms, and her mother wouldn't even touch her. She was leading her into the bathroom to wash her off. So that was kind of nice. Kid had a good time. They all sprayed everybody, sprayed everything. We were off to a slow start when we started the committee, but we seem to be moving along at a better pace now. We've got a lot of things that we'd like to try or do. One comes to ha offhand, which came up pretty quick, is the fireworks. On July 4th, the fireworks we figure should increase by between 50 and 100 percent. It should be really an amazing fireworks display. I understand we're going to try to have music there and possibly food. Now, anything I tell you today, as far as the future, is all in wet concrete. Nothing is fixed to make it solid because it's always changing until the data that I guess that it's going to happen. Now, I joined the committee for a couple reasons. One, because I wanted to have fun. Two, I wanted to help the residents have fun. And I wanted to do things in the township that most of the time had not been done before, like the wrecking ball was something that many people haven't done. I don't even think Dolestown Borough has done something like that. Now, with the, with the wrecking ball, as part of that, when they knock down the building, we have intentions of selling bricks. Uh, the, the price right now is estimated at about $10. Uh, we shouldn't be making much of a profit, if any, on the bricks. The bricks will be cleaned, and a little plate will be attached. We don't know if it's plastic yet or metal will be attached to remind you that it happened in 2018. There are 17, over 17,000 res residents in Dawestown and over 6,300 families. Now, I'd like, <laughs> if possible, like every one of them really have a good time, which is an unrealistic attitude, but if we don't strive to go up to the top, we'll never get nearby. Being that all this stuff that we're doing in the Bicentennial is really for the residents. It's not for anybody else, and the residents are the ones that deserve it, as far as I can see. We do not, hopefully do not, intend to make any profit or any major profit on anything that's sold to the residents. If it was up to me, we'd give a lot away. Now, how can we do that without taking money from the township? And we really don't intend to take any money from the township. We have a couple people on the board, a couple, two or three or four, that are doing a really spectacular job on getting sponsors. Now, I've given the supervisors a list of how it's going and what's, what's our financial condition. Right now, we've got over $15,000 in the kitty. I think we raised somewhere around 19000 So we're doing pretty good on that part. We also have a bunch of people working on the media. And I'd like to see us get on, to, get on TV, not this TV, and start advertising what we'll be doing next year once we get a little more into what we're doing. Another thing that we're doing, which came up just after we were discussing uh, the wrecking ball, were trees. We're going to offer to the residents and to the sponsors 
200 trees to sponsors or more, 200 trees or more to the residents. The sponsor trees will be planted on Dolestown Township property in and around the township. The resident trees, which will be selling somewhere between $40 and $50 per tree, th these trees are only about your big. The resident trees are this big. The township will not plant them for you. <laughs> we'll show you how, but these are oak trees. And I'm sure you not, may not live long enough to see a 40-foot oak tree grow from small size, but your kids will. Hopefully, they'll be around when it reaches 40 or 50 feet in 100 years. Now, some of the kids being born this year and next year may be around in 2118 for the tricentennial, and that will be something. Now, another thing that's coming up, which I, I didn't even know the fellow that was doing this on, is an explorer named Giles. There'll be a presentation on his life and what he's done. Until about four days ago, I didn't know what he was or who, what he did. What I've been told is he was one of the first to go to Africa. No, China. China, on the Great Wall. I'm sorry, thank you. He was the first to see or meet with pygmies. And yeah, that's what I've been, I've just been told. He, his wife's family were one of the first to go for oil in Western Pennsylvania. They also built that house that's just south on 611 on the left side which I thought was a fantastic house. And I never found out what that was all about until about four days ago. The presentation will be made at DelVal. Uh, the dates will be published. Do we have the dates yet? In March. Yeah, it's in March uh, 2018 at DelVal University. So come on down, lots of parking. Uh, and I'm gonna be there to find out more about this guy. I've been here all around the world, but I've never met someone, never heard of someone like him, especially from Doylestown. Now, as far as the things that we're going to do, we have about 20 or 30 ideas. None of them, not many of them, are really super spectacular like the, the wrecking ball. I'd appreciate getting some ideas from you, the residents. Uh, get in touch with me via Stephanie, she'll give you my number if you want it, and we'll try it. If it's out of the ordinary, we'd like to hear about it. If it's ordinary, tell, tell me how to make it extraordinary. But anything that comes to mind, anything that's different. Do you want to mention that there's going to be a day left in January, which is really a trickle for the bicentennial? It's on January 6th. 6th. It's at Dawson Country Club. We've got a gala planned, and we're actually meeting tomorrow to do more detail about the gala. We also have a competition for the design of a township flag, and you'll, you'll find it in our next issue of the township news. Parameters are you can't use any letters or any numbers on the flag design. We're also having a time capsule that will be implanted in um, a cornerstone of our new building. In addition to the gala, and as he said, we're selling 200 trees that would be planted in the township park, 200 oak trees and the saplings for, for people at home. And then we're also having a William Hammerstein celebration um, at, his, at the William, William Hammerstein, Hammerstein um, place with music and everything, celebrate not only the bicentennial but also his birthday. And in addition, it is going to be, we got a lot of super things planned. And... Um, there was one other thing I wanted to say. Um, well, the gala has a date. Let's put it that way. Um, and that's sort of the really next big thing. So put that date aside, January 6, 2018. Dawson Country Club is staying open just for us. Normally they close by January 1st. So there's a lot going on. Oh, and the, f oh, and the float. We're doing our own float for the Memorial Day par Parade in Dawson Borough. So that's huge. Somebody's taking that on as well. Okay. 
Uh, anybody have any questions, suggestions, ideas? Thanks, Joe. That was great. All right. All right. Thank Thanks, you very much. Joe. Um, pension, Ways and Means Subcommittee presentation. <coughs> First, thank the Board of Supervisors, Stephanie Mason and Ken Wallace, for taking the time from your busy schedules over the past seven months to meet with us and provide your input. Earlier today, we emailed out to the Board of Supervisors, <coughs> Stephanie and Ken, the final draft of our report. As we indicated during our most recent meetings, the recommendations in a report should be reviewed as a menu <laughs> of potential actions that the Township could, should consider to address the current pension deficit. Almost all of the recommendations in a report are sourced from various pension studies that we, viewed, we reviewed as part of this project, including Governor Wolf's subcommittee report on pension, uh, municipal pensions, Temple University's Center on Regional Politics report titled The Problem of Funding Pensions, the University of Pittsburgh's Institute of Politics subcommittee report titled What to Do About Municipal Pensions, and Allegheny Institute for Public Policy report titled An Analysis of Local uh, Government Pension Plans in Pennsylvania. We hope that one of the outcomes of our efforts is that we all have a better understanding of the issues involved and, that, and the need to take action to ensure the long-term financial viability of the employees' pension plans are, pre are preserved. At the end of our report, we suggest the following steps. Implement the recommended adjustments to the pension committee structure as soon as possible. Second is we recommend that the township begin making incremental payments into the pension plan, plan above the required MMO beginning with the 2018 budget. Now one of the things that one numbers that we've thrown around is based upon the recent information we got from the actuary is uh, perhaps starting out with anywhere between 275, 276,000 and 300 and 75,000, but certainly it would be up to the Board of Supervisors to decide on the, the final amount. If implemented, we recommend that the new Pension Plan Advisory Committee begin working with the Township, the Actuary, and the Investment Advisor as soon as possible to develop an, a list of action items that can be reviewed, approved, and implemented by the Board of Supervisors in time for the 2019 budget cycle. Uh, Joe, Bob, and I would be happy to meet with the new committee to transition the material that we've pulled together over the past seven months. Unless you have any questions, this concludes what we had planned to cover today. You guys have done an amazing job. The research and the time and the um, analysis and the recommendations are um, priceless. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And we are going to take your recommendations, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just had one question. You had mentioned about the Pension Advisory Committee, the yep. new committee that they would have to develop the action plan? Or you Correct. guys have already <coughs> identified a list of well, many. Correct. <coughs> Correct. So basically, it's, it's, it's really kind of taking it to a lower level of detail right. and saying, all right, you know, what is what is the most impactful and what the amount should be, what how should be phased in over time. Right. Uh, certainly, you know, to obviously get that. And so, certainly the sooner we start taking action and the sooner we can start getting that, 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 um, that deficit down, right. you know, the, the, the better the better off the pension plan will be. Now, are you three willing, you, um, Joe, and Rob, Bob, willing to serve on this subcommittee? Uh, we, we weren't planning on it. We, we've spent a lot of time in. <laughs> no? Is that a no? Or I just want to put my push on for you guys took, and I told you when, when we talked, you took an incredibly complicated issue, for me at least, and made it easy to understand, to walk through everything. So if anybody... Any of you are looking to, I mean, you, you guys did such such an incredible job. And I don't want to put the pressure on you to continue, but um, I went from a place of really having limited bandwidth of understanding the whole complex issue to now feeling very, not only good about understanding it, but also good about the recommendations that you guys made. So thank you. Right. Yeah, no, we, we certainly, that's what we try to do, even, even for ourselves. I mean, we, we, we really, we had a cursory knowledge of, Plans before we certainly learned a lot over the last couple of months, and, and certainly that's what um, 
Yeah, thank you for saying that, and certainly that's what we were trying to do. So either one, any one of you going to stay on the subcommittee? Or think about it. How about we listen to it? What does that, that transition look like? Yeah. I'm sorry? What does that transition look like from what you guys had worked on and where you think it need, where it's where you're recommending it go? Well, I, I, we think, I think the, the first step is the um, is this new um, pension advisory committee. We have to you create know, we, correct, we have to create it, and certainly that would involve a um, – an ordinance, an ordinance, to, 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 to do it. Right. Okay. You need to be in a microphone. Excuse me, gentlemen. Sorry, I'm getting a high sign from the back room that because yeah, we are to go being to televised. Yeah. Stand we have next to we have it, either stand next to Ed or, or yeah. But you got to use the microphone. I apologize. I think that we all have financial backgrounds and, and plenty of years of experience. One of our key recommendations for this new committee is to try to get township residents or local citizens to volunteer uh, on this committee who have pension backgrounds and work in the field oh. and uh, certainly have more expertise than we do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Yep. If you don't mind. What, what's the difference? We have a, a pension committee now. What's Correct. the difference between the pension committee and a pension advisory committee? All right. So basically, basically the way it's structured right now, I mean, the, the pension committee is, is effectively the board of supervisors. I think you know, I think, uh, and, and the uh, and members, but it's and they meet twice a year. And no, nobody on the, or in the current committee, you know, has a, has a background in pensions. And, and, and pensions, pensions are complicated. You know, each of us have, you know, careers, you know, over 30 years in finance. And, and it was complicated for us. And we can't imagine how anybody without a finance background, anybody with, with a, <coughs> and without a pension background, can really do justice in terms of understanding the issues and overseeing it. So basically what we're doing is we're looking for assistance to the, you know, we're looking to create an organization that can help the Board of Supervisors and employees too to understand, uh, to, to, mo to manage the pension plan and to come up with action plans to make sure that the pension plan exists okay. decades from now to make sure that, that your pensions are, are adequately funded. And I think maybe to your question, uh, the current committee includes a um, officer, I mean, a, a representative from the uniformed. And none. And also you mean the proposed the pro committee? No, the no. existing no, committee. Right, right. 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 And our new uh, committee also includes those people. Uh, we certainly think that that's uh, important. We're trying to get five, up to five people from um, the community that have pension experience to be added. Certainly it would be the supervisors and We've also suggested that, you know, the township manager and finance director be part of that committee. I'd like to make a, a motion for an ordinance to reconstitute this pension board, pension board to, be to, to be drafted to, to change how it presently is. Is that, is that correct in yeah, the way I'm, I'm saying I'm that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not clear, but, yeah, I'm, I'm for changing it. I, I, it's not effective in my mind right now. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions from anyone out there? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you, on, thank you so on, much. It's on the way. Awesome. Great, Great job, guys. guys. Excellent. Any visitors to public comment? Um, I think my uh, fellow supervisors will join me in welcoming you to our new digs, <laughs> our, our home for the next 18 months or so. So uh, uh, feel comfortable, and I think uh, I think it's it's well suited for what we need for now. For now, mm -hmm. yeah. Announcements: Next meeting of our board is Tuesday, October seventeenth at five p.m. We're going to meet again with the Ways and Means Committee, and we'll hold hopefully our last budget work session at four o'clock on October seventeenth. Please, you're all welcome to attend. We'll be here. And it's three o'clock though. Oh, we, we just moved to three. three. My apologies. Yes, we did just an hour ago change it to three. A Bucks County Board of Elections is going to hold a meeting on the proposed change of the polling places in Doylestown Township for voting district one and eight on Wednesday, October 4th. I guess that's tomorrow, 1.30 at the Bucks County Administrative Building. That's at 55 East Court Street, fifth floor conference room. So we're going to change the district's meeting place, district one and eight. So they're going to be talking about that tomorrow at four o'clock. No, excuse me, tomorrow at 1.30. 
Doylestown Township administrative offices will be closed on Monday for uh, Monday, October 9th for Columbus Day. Township Performing Arts Series continues um, with our final presentation of uh, a movie called Beauty and the Beast, Friday, October 20th at the Covenant Bank Amphitheater in Central Park. Halloween, that's for dogs and their owners, it's October 21st, 2017 at Central Park from 10 to 1 p.m. And then uh, following that is the CB Cares Pumpkin Fest, um, same day, October 21st at the Moravian Tile Works from 2 o'clock to 10 p.m. at night. And that's the cost of $20 per carload. That's a fundraiser for the CB Cares Educational Foundation programming in Central Park School District. Dillison Township Leaf and Yard Recycling is um, March through December, 9 a.m. to 11. You come in the New Britain um, Road entrance to Central Park, and it's for Dillison Township residents only. And you can purchase discount movie tickets from our administrative offices. I'm not quite sure where you go right now for that, but yeah, probably the administration building um, straight. The it's kind of we're in a U shape. Right? Next okay. door over. Okay, the, Next the door other over. angle of the, the U. Middle, the middle door. Middle door. Okay, so you can get discount movie <laughs> tickets over there. Um, fundraising opportunities. We've got magnets um, from the EAC, and we still have a couple bicentennial hats left, and they're eighteen dollars each. The magnets are five dollars each. And Dawson Township Park and Rec, in partnership with Premier World Discovery, is offering two trips in 2018, the Great Trains and Great Canyons and Treasures of Ireland. So if you want to go and uh, get more information, you can get that at the administrative offices over there with brochures for highlights and inclusions and exclusions, no doubt. Next item on the agenda, approval of the regular meeting minutes for September 19, 2017. Has everyone had a chance to review these minutes? Yes. Any corrections, changes? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. And then the budget work session meeting notes for, um, yeah, the same date, uh, September 19th at 6 p.m. Any changes, corrections? Everyone had a chance to look at them? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve them? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any correspondence? No. None. Any reports from Mr. McGinnis, Michael McGinnis? Uh, no. Any additional comments will be addressed within the remainder of the agenda items. Thank you. Chief? I mean, uh, Lieutenant? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Surprise. Don't tell him I did that. <laughs> it's on TV. <laughs> Township engineer? Nothing. Oh. I, I'm saying it's, it's live as we speak. Um, Director of Operations, I yes, really don't want to hear from you. No offense, but. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you received the memo in your packet from me regarding a pending change order for the police uh, large evidence storage and the carport. As requested, uh, that memo included a summary of change orders. Um, I may have a math error in there. I was trying to quickly do it, but I couldn't. But ultimately, right now, um, that, that memo indicates we're about $77,000 in change orders now a large portion of that which is the electrical would have been work that was would have been done in phase two okay so um we have before you a change order number three which is a revision to the framing for uh, enlarging the garage doors on the carport um and it was this was a handout so this is this is, was placed oh, in front oh, of you oh, sorry oh, yeah right. handout there you go yeah. okay Thank you. um it was an error in the plans. The chief did that, walked out and did his inspection and quickly realized that the garage doors were not wide enough to fit a, a flatbed tow truck to back up and, and, and basically drop a vehicle that would be stored in there for evidence. Uh, we quickly talked to the architect and to the contractor, stopped the work, and uh, basically revised, uh, got a revision here for a change order. Um, the change order, the memo that I handed out to you, uh, dated today, October 3rd, for change order number three and four, uh, is for an ad addition of $10,432.99. It also includes a deduct of doors and hardware of $4,350. So the total for change order number three is $6,082.99. Okay. Um, so that's change order number three. Um, 
Another way to control cost, and I put this before you, is we have some decorative uh, cupolas going on the top of the building. We're working hard to try to offset cost and try to do things, and, and you know, things just sometimes and slip through the cracks, and this was one of them. Um, change order number four is a deduct of $2,360, which would remove the cupolas, bringing the total change order down to $3,722.99. Why do you say the cupolas are up? Down? Trying to we save don't want money. Them anymore? Trying they're to they're save money. What are you going to do? Build them? We want to install them right now. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to offset costs. So Can we use the one that we're taking off this one. That's that's an option that Mr. Shea bought forward. That he would he would basically reinstall the existing cupola or some fashion with the weather vane on we'll have one, on the top. Just not going to yeah, on the higher one. portion of the building, okay. which is in the rear, but would have, be a nice sight line. So. No, I think it's a good I, – I, two comments. One, you know, I, I – as a resident, I don't want to pay for decorations. So, you know, the cupola that's going to use use current ones we have, that's fine. But – and I appreciate you saying it slipped in because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know – you know, spend $2,300 for cupolas to me is um, uh, an expense that we, we, we don't need to pay. And I don't want cinder blocks and prison bars. I mean, I, I understand right. we got to make it nice. But and my other comment is how I mean a nine by twelve is for a car. How did they do a nine by twelve when a garage is normally twelve by twelve? A, a standard I mean, garage door at home residential is nine feet wide by right. nine by eight ish nine by depends nine by nine right depends so but this isn't a regular garage door. This is agreed agreed. It was an error. Um, Whose error was it? Let's let's not be well. I you know the building committee basically stated to the architect that the, the we discussed the height of the doors for these bays and then you know we also said this needed to fit a flatbed uh tow truck so i mean you know we i feel personally i feel it's an admission to the, of the architect well has that been discussed with the architect not at the moment no i mean we've had they know that there's obvious obviously there's an error because they've reviewed this change order and they've approved it okay. um and you know, that's so, so maybe we should keep a running tab of these things so that we can have a conversation with the architect if necessary. Right, and, and we do. Okay. And that's part of the, the accounting, which you would ask for from the previous meeting. Correct. Thank so, you. And that, that will con they'll continue to do this. <coughs> Hopefully, we won't have any more. Um, so. Okay, let's hope not. Is there a motion to approve the change order with the um, deduction of the cost of the cupolas? I'll make that motion. Well, Start going back to the architects to try to recoup some of that cost. No, no, that's not. That was not my suggestion. Oh, Just I keep them running list of what, oh, what things of, are of happening. Those that types of issues, right? Okay. That we can uh, talk about. But they can sep certainly convey that we're sure. happy. Yeah. <coughs> I made that motion. Is there, and there's a second. second. All in favor? Uh, All right. Thank you. All right, Dave. Thanks. May I have one more thing I'd like to sure. propose. Um, moving forward. And the approvals have changed. This this cost us waiting for this only cost us about three days. Um, I'm not saying again that the, the, there will be issues to address, and, and that's just a fact of construction, whether it be renovations or new construction. And phase two is even larger, as we know. So I'd like to uh, propose that uh, I come back with uh, something for the board to consider in monetary scaled amounts of so much money. It would be the building committee plus the architectural approval to approve certain dollar amounts of change orders if necessary, and then obviously certain amounts would have to go in front of the board. So I, I will prepare. I thought we had that, but maybe not. We had a discussion on it in the building committee, but we never really decided right. we, whether we, we should did. develop the what policy. What number can we talk about, $1,500 or $3,000, something like that? I don't know. I don't know, but let me come back with a recommendation. I'll yeah. do that for, I'll have that for next meeting, okay. and then okay. we can move forward with that. Okay, okay. thank you. Thanks. I think too. Just sorry, just real quick. It, it, it it's one thing if it's like fifteen hundred dollars, but if they're also uh, with your recommendation, I think you should come back with not to exceed a total of, right. because you could come, you could do fifteen hundred dollars every single day. Yeah. So just look at it that way too. Yeah. Within what one two week period? Yeah, there has to yeah, just be yeah. some yeah. sort of like cap yeah. to that. Yeah. Agreed. Understood. Okay. Um, and that's it. For you, Dave? Yes, thank you. Manager? I have nothing at this time. Supervisors? Ryan? 
Um, I just want to give a uh, quick thank you to actually Officer Real. I'm glad that you're here. Um, he did such a fantastic job at the 9-11 Heroes Run uh, two weeks ago now, two Sundays ago. He led, um, led the race off on the motorcycle, and I was lucky enough to be in the, the front car in front of him, and I got great video, which I have to share with you, but of taking all the runners out. Um, they had close to 3,000 runners that started out at Font Hill, and it was just great to see uh, Doylestown Township representing. So thank you so much for that. Can you share that video with our, I will. our, with our yes. group here? So yes. that can go on our... I will do that. And with the PBA, because they, they have their own site. So. Yep, I will do that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Mr. Colello. I just have one comment on um, uh, a project at the Planning Commission. We're working on the Callan project, which is off of Warden Road. And um, as we do occasionally, when there's some disagreements, we meet out in the field with the developer, with the residents, with the township personnel, with the engineers. <laughs> and um, it was very, actually, when we first got there, they just had nothing but praise for the work we do on the roads and the, and the repairing of the roads and the snow removal. And they know all, Paul and this. I know we're going through all the people's names. So that's kudos. You know, Dave, that, that, that they really appreciate, <coughs> excuse me, what, what we do. And then when the developer came out, it was good to see that he really doesn't have horns. And he really was a, a, nice, <laughs> um, a nice gentleman. And we spent about an hour, an hour and a half, uh, walking around. And the upshot is we had our last planning commission last week, and only one resident showed up. And that resident showed up to thank him for all the work he's done, what he's doing, and they really appreciate him as a neighbor and a kumbaya session. So it really, really worked out well. And you'll be seeing the Callan Project probably in the me next meeting or two. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Mr. Snyder, do you have anything? Uh, no comments. <coughs> do you? No, thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, unfinished business, the Citizens Commission for Legislative and Congressional Redistricts. Uh, district. And we, and we all got some additional information since our last meeting. Ryan, you wanted some additional uh -huh. information. You went mm -hmm. to perhaps meeting with a former Congress. I didn't go to the meeting, but I did get Greenwood. the additional information. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, well, it's up for discussion. Comments, questions, considerations? Positions on this uh, request for the supervisor to take a position that we um, resolution that we would support the um, co citizens commission for legislative and congressional redistricting. It's it's tabled request. right now. Yes, it is. So, are you saying he bring wants to bring it back up? Yeah. I'll bring it back on the table. I appreciate the information you sent. Um, I know Rick, you have a problem with the resolutions to the state in general, but. Um, Outside of that, I um, I think we should I, – I agree with the idea of taking a hard look at gerrymandering, and I have no problem. And I'll make a motion to send this resolution. Is there a second? There's a second. Okay. I'd like some to, to make some comments. Yeah. Um, personally, I support this. I support the idea that um, there's a commission that looks at redistricting. Um, I, I do – I'm aware, though, that – when we so, and it doesn't mean I'm not going to vote for it, mm -hmm. but I really think we have to be considered considerate of our authority. Um, this is beyond our authority. This is a um, this is something that just that we're just going to say that you know we like this idea. We should do redistricting and and all that. Um, but there are the information that was provided to us contains some very very good inf very good recommendations. And looking at this redistricting is only one of them. Some of the other recommendations and they think are equally as valid is that we support a change in the electric process that what does that's gerrymandering that we restructure the governing process by forming a commission to redesign congressional rules the other thing is to reduce the influence of money in, in politics that's another recommendation and um, and and there's there's a fourth all these are I think are is as important as a commission to look at gerrymandering um, when we we're, we're, we're five people. We're a board that's making a decision on behalf of 17,000 people mm -hmm. or more. Not everybody sees gerrymandering or redistricting as an issue, and they don't see it all in the same way. 
so that when we make a decision as a board, we are affecting the, 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 the consideration of all of our residents, and we are taking a position on behalf of all of our residents. So that is my caution to this board, because where does it stop? Should we, our next one, I think is even more insidious, is the amount of money that goes into political campaigns. That is one of the recommendations. Sure. Are we going to consider that one next? I don't like slippery slope arguments, mm -hmm. but well, it is a slippery slope. No, and I, 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 I see what you're saying, and I, and I agree with what you're saying. I think, though, just because I put a motion for this, and I see the other, if, if there was something in front know, of me know, specific to political uh, financial contributions, I would look at that objectively too, and I, and I wouldn't just vote for that based off of the fact that it was a recommendation inside of this. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, we make decisions every day for 17,000 residents. You know what I mean? We do within the, under the authority of, that's been granted to us by the legislature and is detailed in our municipal planning code, in our municipal co code, and this is not necessarily right. one of them. No, I see what you're saying. I and I, I, I caution the board because we lose credibility on the decisions that we have to make under our authority if we're making decisions that are outside of our authority. Um, it feels good to do this, absolutely. But it's out. It's outside of our technical purview of our of our governing. Um, that being said, um, there's a motion and a second. Well, I'd like to comment. I'd like to echo what you said because you know at the last meeting I said the same thing. In fact, if you saw, <coughs> excuse me, the Supreme Court of the United States on Monday put this on their agenda. They're going to hear this case, so maybe we want to send it to all nine justices. I mean, where where does it stop? Um, so and it is a slippery slope. And 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 uh, who's to stop all the residents out there seeing us sending in what they you know a balanced budget, uh, you know feed the hungry, you know send them all in and we'll just print out resolutions day after day or month or meeting after meeting, and that's really why I'm opposed to it. It's not our bailiwick. Well, and the other the other comment I would make is both of our our, our senator and our our legislator are in support that's of true. commissions um, true. for redistricting. So. <coughs> I, I, I see the I, I, I see the point of um, it's on the agenda. It's um, well, I, first and second. And I think I think too. Rick and Barbie both bring up good points to this. I think it's not like these are being put in front of us every day, right? So there is that to consider. If we get to a place where that is happening, then then maybe it's time for more discussion around that too. I, I mean, I'm just saying sometimes there are one-offs, you know, but that's all. Okay. Anybody else care to comment? I, I see the proponent of uh, you, you. You've heard the discussion. I don't know that there's anything more you need to say. We're pretty much educated on your right, position. Yes, if you've got any questions for me, I'm happy to. Okay. Happy to All right. Anybody else have any comments? Calling the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Abstain. Okay. So we have one abstention, one nay, and three <laughs> yeses. Okay. Moving on to the next item. Uh, da, da, da. New business, Pen, PENDES resolution. Yes, we have a resolution. As the board knows, we're um, submitting, working to submit the application for the PENDES loan. This is a required resolution. Um, it was sent over to us um, as part of the process, and I did have Matt McHugh look at it, and he said it was okay. So I would ask the board to authorize the you know, Barbara's signature for the um, resolution so that we can submit it with our package to Penn Best. Absolutely necessary. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? <coughs> yes? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, zoning hearing board application for Burke. Yes. We have an application for them. Uh, you saw them at your last um, meeting where they proposed to have the historic site um, and they need to go to the zoning hearing board um, due to the size of the property and I would recommend that our zoning hearing board handle that matter. The size of property meaning less than 10 acres? Yes, it's less 8. than 10 acres. 8.9 8. 8. 8. yeah. approximately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was because of a taking for the 202 Parkway. In 2009. Yeah. 
for which they were reimbursed. I'm not, I'm not impressed. Okay. <laughs> I, that does not get us into feedback. Okay. They got, they, they're, the that's probably got what they're going to say. I'm sure. You, yeah. I'm sure they're Note gonna, that you know, to the zoning hearing board. board. They don't get extra I think the zoning hearing board will figure that out, too. Okay. Um, it, it, that doesn't need any, no, any just, action. Yeah. All right. Any other business? Hearing none, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I never do that.